Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series with me your host Kyle. I've got another Average Joes for you today and this time it's on the Gap of Rohan. It's a map that's been played an awful lot recently, it seems to be very popular at the moment and I don't think I've ever casted one so I thought it was about time that I did just that. Before we crack on with it though I'd like to reiterate something I mentioned in the last cast at the beginning. The uh, proposals for the new 3622 patch are on the forum guys. If you haven't done so go and read them and see what people are saying because there will be votes and you will want to have the uh, facts at your disposal so you can make the decision that's right for you when the votes come about. That's all I need to say about it. So, on to the Gap of Rohan. It's going to be, obviously, a 4v4 because that is the uh, setup on this map. So, let's check out the teams and the locations up here. At the top left, we've got Supreme0961. He's going firm in the yellow corner. He's also the guy who sent me the replay, so thank you very much to him. In the number two position, we have his teammate Apophis. He's in the grey corner. He's going Aeon. And below him, in the number three spot, he's going Orange. He is UEF, and he is Butcher the seventh. I don't know whether that means there have been six people before him all called Butcher. That's very unfortunate if there have been, but it's just the way it goes. And then down here at the bottom, Sunder or Sund123. We're going to call him Sund because it's just easy, and he's green UEF. So, we've got a Fim, an Aeon, and two UEFs for Team 1. Over at the top right for Team 2, we have Spark. He's in the red corner, he's going UEF. Already making his way to the middle is Chris. He's going beige Aeon. Down here, in the number 3 spot for Team 2, we've got Dreddy Kruger. And he's going Cybrin in the, I guess that's teal. I think that's Luzon's favorite color, teal. That's what he always seems to go as. And then down here at the bottom we have Psycho Killer. He's going blue Fim. So that is the teams and how they stack up. Now if for some reason you've never played this map, let me explain a little about it. You've of course got this uh, gap in the middle. That's where most of the action takes place. Can be a bit of static base building. Can get a bit turtly every now and again. We'll hope this one doesn't. And that is the main land access from one side of the map to the other. However, there are two others. There is a northern pass up here in the hills, which is just like a little crack. And you can get your units through there in kind of single file. And there's also a very similar one down here in the southern hills. And that is basically the only way you're going to get things across the other side of the map, short of air dropping them or attacking with air. So... Lots of mass to be claimed in the middle, and Chris looks like he's going to get his hands on it first. He's promptly making his way into the middle. Lots of Titan Rex. And there's also uh, a few mass points to be had, so there's a slight advantage in holding the middle. Not least that map control is going to be on your side, and that's useful for intelligence gathering. But also if you're going to be able to do any kind of uh, pummeling, uh, point defense creep, anything like that, you're going to need to get on to your opponent's side of the map. So that is going to be what they are after. Butcher has sent a uh, drone across. He's done the rover drone upgrade on the comm. That's a nice little tactic. I sometimes like to do that myself on a uh, ISIS map. It allows you to hoover up your proportion of the maps without uh, risking your commander. And he's going to crack on with that. Chris is going to try and counter that by getting an anti-air turret up. But uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to manage that before this gets far too much proportion of the mass. In fact, he stops doing that and starts going after the Rex. He realizes if he stays on that, he's going to lose out in terms of mass. Doesn't want to do that. So that is definitely the right decision. And of course, the ACU hoovers up so much quicker than the drone. Look at that. The second the ACU gets on it, the hit points just fall off that wreck. And that all goes into Chris's bank. So we'll take a look at how these guys make out on the mass front once this is over. Selen getting popped on Spark's way through as he pops over the side. Pop is complaining about the lag. Uh, certainly looks fine at our end, but that is because we're watching a replay, uh, so it would be. Uh, Icarus now making his way a little bit further. Butcher has made his way to the middle. He's trying to get up some factories, but he's looking very isolated indeed. He's going to get some help at some point. A couple of his teammates are heading to the middle with their commanders. Supreme and Apophis. But uh, suddenly... We're getting a little bit of action here between Butcher and Chris and Spark. I don't really know why Spark isn't getting involved. He really should do. He's allowing Chris to go one-on-one -on -one with UEF Commander, and that's not going to generally turn out well for an Aeon, being as they have a slightly lower order number of hit points. But two-on-one, Butcher is going to have to retreat, and that's what he's going to start doing. Can't contend with that much firepower. 
Butcher complaining to his teammates about it. Uh, Supreme's up here on an upgrade, so he can't help. And uh, Apophis has ignored him, and he's gone through the upper aperture. And looks like he's going to try and lay down a whole bunch of T1 PD, the Aeon Eruptors. One factory down already. We'll take a look at quickly at how they made out the difference between that shoulder drone and the hoovering. So we've got 2,000 mass for Butcher. Chris is on double the mass. So you can really see the difference between getting your commander in there and just going for that shoulder drone opening. But still, it has its advantages. Um, namely, it allowed him to get working on these factories at the same time. And while that hasn't helped him dramatically because he hasn't had the support from his teammates, but this is not looking too good. Spark has found himself completely isolated. Chris has disappeared. He's going over here to try and tackle with this point defense spam that's going up. And now he finds himself one on two with one of the components having possession of the gun upgrade. And he's not going to make it out of there short of these guys messing up completely. There's no way. He's got no reinforcements and the hit points are falling off him like he's dieted his balls off. That's not good at all. Below 2000 HP. He's gone. Bombs coming in from Supreme. Oh dear, that's not the opening he was hoping for. <laughs> so, uh, Team 2 taking a very early loss there. Butcher actually only just made it out with 2,500 HP on his comm after the explosion. But, uh, yeah, my god, that's not cool. That's not cool at all. So, Team 2 instantly at a disadvantage. And Apophis looking very, very ballsy indeed now overcharging groups of engineers, really getting in there. But the trouble is for him is that Dreddy Kruger has got the T2 upgrade on his comm. He actually has a T2 radar that's just been blown up by one of Apophis' bombers. Trouble is there's now a Cerberus turret online. He is well within range, so he is going to have to back up as that opens up on Commander. He's rapidly heading west back into friendly territory. You can see the kind of range T2 PD's got on him. Doing a little bit of micro heads north a little bit aimlessly wandering around like he's lost his keys finally going to make his way back into what looks like friendly territory he's got one further chasing him and if he's wise this further he can take out these two point defense short of the commander turning around and popping him of course engineer coming back he's not wise he's straight straight into that point defense's range and promptly got zapped kruger now working on a new mini base a little bit further forward Starting on Cerberus turret first, then going to the shield gen, and then getting a couple more Cerberus turrets. So he wants to try and put some fire on this forward section. He's got a couple of commanders not very far away from Team 1. They are both working on upgrades quite heavily indeed. Of course, Supreme already has the gun upgrade. You assume that's the T2 engineering suite that is going up there. And that will give them a nice little bit of control in the middle. Apophis is moving back now. Clearly doesn't want to uh, over force his, or play, overplay his hand I should say. He's got a hell of a lot of bombers at the top of the map. I'm not really sure what they're uh, heading for. He, he's, uh, if he'd have headed out early he could have prevented the expansion from Chris, who's managed to get a whole bunch of engineers to this upper section. He's got three land factories down. He's got at least five, six or seven mass points already or five or six. And uh, if he'd have been in the area to see that, of course if we take a look at what Team 1 can actually see doesn't actually know that they've exp he's expanded that quickly, but you could anticipate it, certainly. Um, <laughs> quite funny. See a slight note there from uh, Butcher. He sounds like a lovely person, for those of you watching at 1080. For those of you that aren't watching at 1080, um, you're just going to have to imagine what that says. <laughs> but moving swiftly on, finally those bombers look like they're going to realize the extent at which Chris has expanded, and that's of course going to give him quite a nice advantage seems to be reasonably adept at this game. He's uh, the highest, in fact, he is the highest rated guy in the game, and he's now got his hands on the most amount of mass. In a sec, we'll take a look at the economy to see how they stack up. Those forward eruptors go down for Apophis. He needs to deal with this engineer to stop him sealing up that gap, which he's done. Uh, gradually, Chris is starting to amass troops at the entrance to the northern aperture. And a Ravager online. My god. So that must have been the very long upgrade that we saw happening on Butcher. He spammed up T3 Engineering Suite. 
and that is going to force Kruger right out of this little base he was working in. There's nothing he's got that can contend with that at the moment. Never get into a war, a point defense war with a UEF player, especially when he's ahead on tech. And it looks like we're getting a little bit of a push through the pass now. Chris is on the move. And there's nothing in back here in terms of Supreme's troops that you can use to deal with that. Apophis's ACU is on an upgrade. It's moving quite quickly, but for the moment he's static. So that could be quite interesting to see how that plays out. At the same time, looks like we've got a little bit of a push here coming from Chris. Great thing about the, the way this is laid out on Rohan is it's not a single base situation dom instant dominance because of these two little hills you can get your units in behind and then come around the side. But we've got some stingers that have turned up from Sund and that's going to mop up those units from Chris without any difficulty whatsoever. Needs to keep them in the area because they will be invaluable at dealing with all of this. You imagine that they've got enough intel, yes they have, to see all that well aware of what's going on there but they're moving their way in or making their way in making their move in taking out an engineer and they can get right into the rear sections of supreme's base supreme's got nothing that can deal with it in the immediate vicinity it can start heading up there with troops which is what apophis is doing could really do with those stingers from sund get up there right now and help which is finally what he's doing they're on their way now but uh, it's all going to be a question of how much damage is done by the time that they arrive. <laughs> One fam turning up, trying to alleviate the pressure, but a few more pop out of the factories. And uh, lots of fervors coming up from Apophis in the middle, and finally the Stingers get involved. So the damage will be quite minimal, might lose a mass point or two, it's lost maybe 61 p gen, 71 p gen, something like that, and a factory, it really could have been a lot worse, but nicely handled there, and you can see the extent to which uh, Butcher has advanced with that point defense creep, he's getting another upgrade on, we'll take a look at what that actually is, the backpack has altered, which means he's changed it, which means he's probably going for the TAC missile launch. You can see he's dropped the shoulder drone. I imagine, or either that or the personal shield gen for a little bit of forward tankiness. Backpack reappears. It is a TAC missile launcher. And of course, the quick rate at which you can span that up, especially with all the build capacity just chilling there. If he's got the eco, which he obviously has. And you imagine his target of choice will be the resourcing options of the front two players. Definitely what he should be going after. And he's going deep into Dreddy Kruger's territory. And suddenly there's a whole lot of vulnerable stuff back there. There's even a nearly built T3 power generator. Immediately that first one connects. A zapper gets uh, started by Dreddy. Loses a T2 power. Could do without that. We'll take a look in real time at how this is affecting his resourcing. He's floating a huge amount of mass. He's actually got plenty of power. You can see how much tougher the commander TAC missiles are taking three shots to kill from a zapper very tough indeed and now he switched targets very nice indeed he anticipated the zapper's construction promptly changed he's going straight after psycho killer's resourcing option four t2 mass points down and more to follow you would imagine look at them all coming out this way the speed at which he can launch them you couldn't get a t2 tac missile launcher to do that And that has annihilated all of the mass of Psycho Killer. We'll take a look at what he's at now. He's down to 19 mass. As opposed to say, well, let's take a look at what Butcher's on. He's up in the, well, he's probably got to be reclaiming. He can't be in the 90s. He could be on the 90s, I guess. It's obviously way far ahead in the economy. And look at all the green blips. All of those mass points that have gone down. And finally, Tat Missile Defense goes up. Now he's switched again. And he's working on Kriz. That's going to be painful. Three mass points down, four mass points down, hydrocarbon down, that's just rude. We've got a GC under construction in the middle, we've got a monkey lord under construction just south of it, 
So they've moved the experimental phase. I think it's what they need to do to be able to break this. Otherwise, they could be a little bit stuck. But the units that were sent north back on the left-hand side to defend Supreme's base have now made their own way on a counter push through the hills and are matching up. And Apophis has set his ACU up there as well. Very bold indeed. He is quite isolated there as he works on more oblivion or oblivion turrets and radar systems to give himself a little bit of control. And at exactly the same time, we've also got a push from Psycho Killer. So let's see how this is going to work out. We'll get a split screen so we can keep track of these two at the same time. Sun doesn't have much in the way of land, but of course he's still got access to these stingers and there's absolutely nothing in the way of anti-air in that mix or virtually nothing, which is going to be nice and easy for him to obliterate unless he gets some assistance from, say, Chris. You can see he's got quite a lot of interceptors there. It's all going to come down to team communication and how well that is deployed. Now, it's mostly Fervors kicking out fire on this, and they're losing out slightly to the direct fire units from the Thams that they're making their way in, but this Eruptor is dealing with it quite well. But they will have trouble as soon as Apophis gets that Oblivion turret online. And finally, the Stingers come in on the left-hand side to start dealing with that spam from Psycho Killer that was just hanging out in the hills, waiting for the rest of their buddies to arrive so they can have a barbecue. But uh, Sund had other ideas. He started the barbecue early. And still that point defense creep continues. So many Ravagers up front for Butcher. Relentless. But the Monkey Lord is now online and making its way to the front of the uh, Butcher's latest base. Wants to take out those Ravagers as quickly as possible. They're not spooling up on him. So they haven't got Omni near the front. They're only going to see it when he turns up. And that's going to give him valuable time to destroy them, which is what it's done. There's a lot of them there still. You can see the hit points evaporate from that Monkey Lord. He's down to about 60% HP. Could do with taking that out. Not going to manage it, but that's a nice little strat. A nice little strat. Get in, get out. But look at the breakthrough at the top from Apophis. All of those units have made their way through thanks to the Oblivion Turret, I guess, destroying that Eruptor. That has allowed him to get an awful lot of units through, and there's a lot of build capacity that's going to get caught on the right-hand side now, which is not going to go well at all. But somehow, I don't know how, I guess maybe they were shooed off by some interceptors from Team 2. Somehow those Stingers are no longer in position firing on Psycho, and he, he has had to have, uh, or Supreme has had to bring down some units of his own to assist with that ground defense. That monkey on the right-hand side has now been pulled off the front and is heading to the right to deal with those units heading in the middle. A GC is finally completed. You can see that uh, Chris has donated a hell of a lot of his own engineers to Psycho Killer and Dreddy Kruger, and that has allowed him to split the cost slightly and go after him. You can see the commander has been pinged, so Team 2 well aware that that is where the commander is, and he has moved so far forward. I don't like that at all. I don't know why he's being so bold. That is absolutely crazy. An experimental, of course, is much quicker. Those two experimentals are much quicker than the ACU. They could totally chase it down. But instead, he's decided to go after Butcher, who's very far forward at the edge of the shield. Laser firing on him, but he switched to the Ravager. I think that's a mistake. If he'd have chased him down, he probably could have got him. Deciding to stay on it, and Butcher is by far and away the biggest uh, issue for Team 2 at the moment. This point defense creep has been absolutely nasty. You can see how quickly he's rebuilt all of those Ravagers because the wrecks were still there. It's been no cost to him really at all, or half the cost. And uh, Chris moving his own ACU quite close in proximity to Apophis, who's trying to get a point defense creep on slowly moving Oblivion turrets into range of a very vulnerable looking edge of Chris's base but all the time of course there are experimentals kicking around in the middle that is a dangerous game to play indeed I don't really know why I'm still on split screen we'll go back to single screen got a few gunships kicking around for Apophis over on the right hand side but another set of spam heading south take out all that build capacity that'd be very nice for team one indeed another push from the monkey and gc indeed i'll go back to split screen excuse me for the indecision and you can see finally the units moving in and popping all the engineers at the same time monkey lord heading in to the center of the map and getting out 
absolutely annihilated by all that Seraphim PD. There's way more there than he obviously expected. Aurora's now making its way further into the center of Chris's base. Chris's GC is looking very peaky indeed on 7,000 HP. Wants to try and get over there and clear up all of this stuff. If he could bag the kill, the snipe on Apophis' ACU, that headache will go away in a second. Certainly giving him problems. And all the while this is going on, of course, uh, Chris is unable to take advantage of all of this mass that's just sitting there. But now Apophis has problems, and I suspected this was going to happen. Short of some gunships coming in to kill this GC, he is going to die. There is, And why he's not sending his own gunships in now, I don't know. Perhaps uh, he doesn't recognize the issue. He does have it on the radar, but he must know he's going to die. He's never going to get away from that GC. And that GC's only got 8,000 hit points. If he'd have made a move on it straight away, I mean, I know there's a lot of thistles there the t1 flak but he's got to do something because the laser goes off and takes out the commander and that is him out of the game butcher was calling for sunder to help him but oh my god that is uh that's not good at all for team one that evens things up dramatically we'll see uh, we'll see the share conditions aren't on we did see sparks base go up earlier and there they go again as all of apophis's stuff goes up we have got into the T3 air phase, however, getting a nice amount of ASFs out for uh, Chris. So, to be honest, the gunships wouldn't have helped. It doesn't matter whose they were. I think uh, Chris had the anti-air to deal with it. But then, of course, it's not very many hit points. He had about 7, 7.5k when he really could have gone for it. That GC, the second one, is losing hit points, was under construction, is now finally under construction again. Just a little horde of stingers making their way around the map from Sund, who seems rather indecisive, if you won't mind me saying it, doesn't really know what he's going for. Could do with picking up that mass point as well. Not sure what would have taken that out. Lots of pinging going off from Team 1, trying to uh, encourage their teammates to pick up that mass. And I think uh, both of these teams have expended so much stuff, we're likely to have a little bit of a lull here in activity. Fat boy making its way forward from Butcher, and that'll be the next issue that Team 2 have to face. Seem to be anything significant on the map to deal with it, with the exception of another monkey that Dread has completed. That is now making its way towards the center. See if there's any kind of Omni up at the middle. can remember how to do it so we'll take up um, Intel there we go and we'll switch over there so there is indeed Omni at the middle and they can now see it go coming forward and the um, units on their way get rid of that and go back to observer that has been pinged promptly been spotted they're too late moving that fat boy however and with the GC moving as well, he's, it's almost like he's stuck. I don't know what's going on there, but that's a bad decision. Sun comes in to try and alleviate the pressure with the Stingers, but there's no way that fat boy's making it out of there. What Ravager's going to go down as well. He is desperate to keep that GC alive. It's on 48 kills. It could be on a better amount. I almost wonder if it's not worth him killing that off and just using the reclaim. How's he doing on mass? He is uh, hes in the plus, but he's not floating any. As he gets more engineers onto uh, that Colossus, that mass advantage will disappear. Starting to move back. Gee, he's not. He needs to get more engineers out to pick up those mass points. Currently, he's very far behind the curve. He's starting to get some of the other mass points up at level T2 with his com. And... Butcher promptly gets a whole group of engineers forward to try and get some of the mass off that Bat Boy, but they stray into Zooey range from Chris. That is the end of that. That's quite interesting. He's got Zooey, so he's using. I don't know what he's using, whether they were donated from Psycho or he, they've swapped tech or, or something, but he's using Fim tech as Aeon. 
imagine that they've been donated at some point. Not seeing any Fim factories up in his base. But uh, yeah, definitely a lull in activity at the moment. So I'm going to knock this up a notch to speed two. And a very small land factory, really far forward. That looks so out of place, it's unreal. Another fat boy online as well for Butcher. Let's see what these guys are doing. A lot of power under construction for Dreddy Kruger. As we approach the 30 minute mark. A chicken, which is very nearly done from Psycho Killer. And some broadswords that are out as well that look like they were making their way over this side of the map but have probably returned, probably rapidly turned off by this whole mobile T2 flak thing advancing to the aperture. Again, another fat boy trying to get in range of the forward section of Team 2's middle bases. See the kind of range they've got. It doesn't take a great deal of difficulty for that fat boy to move up a couple of feet and put all of this in range. Chris has been nice and spread out with his base building which does has it have its advantages certainly. And uh, a disruptor moving into position down, sorry disruptor, a demolisher moving into position down here for Butcher. It's just gonna not Butcher. God, what am I talking about? For Sund. And he's just going to fire over the ridge and pop these T2 flat cannons as they're hanging out. And finally, Psycho Killer recognizes the danger and moves him. I don't know if experimentals can get through that gap. That's a very big piece of Seraphim technology for a very small aperture. <laughs> uh, I think that's optimistic, dude. It looks like he's having trouble just getting up into the plateau. And probably stops. <laughs> does my ass look big in this canyon? Yes, it does. <laughs> and he turns around. I'm not sure whether he stopped because he saw the broadswords coming in or whether he couldn't go any further. It looked like he stopped dead, so I would imagine he probably couldn't go any further. But he's got nothing to deal with this. Doesn't seem to have any air units of his own. Relying on some... ASS from Chris, who finally comes in with one. He's got more coming in as well. And what is Sun doing? Why did you pull off? You could have killed that. That's a huge mistake as far as I'm concerned. Shoot away by one ASF. Very unnecessary. And he had four more about to come off the build pad of his own. He could have killed that chicken, no problem. In fact, he could be in here with that. Just popping mass in, in the back here. Oh my god, where did that come from? Okay, so there's a Scathis online. And it must have just got online. How quickly did he spam that up? That is insane. Admittedly, I had it running T2, but that wasn't even started a minute ago. That is the new Scathis. I'm still not used to it. And Butcher taking an awful amount of fire. Needs to back up into the red below 4,000 hit points. Or on around the 4,000 hit point mark. Fat Boy dead in the middle. So much damage at close range. Of course, the Scathis was uh, altered in a, uh, a patch not so long ago, and it is up for alteration again, guys. It's one of the things I was talking about earlier. If you want to know more about it, please check on the forums and see the proposal. But, uh, yeah, he was almost uh, lucky to escape that. Could have been a real problem for Team 2. And this little central base that's looked so strong for most of the game is now looking very... Very weak indeed. Team 1 need to find a way of dealing with that Scathis. There's a lot of Janus building up here for Butcher. That's probably his idea. Get in there and try and kill the Scathis. Certainly, there's a lot less shielding there than I'm comfortable with. Crab also underway. Could do with a lot more shielding there. But uh, you sort of get... Have a look at the range. If you guys have played much recently or remember the old Scathis, that is all you get in range with the Scathis. So if you want to get in range of any of these things, you have to move that sucker forward. And that uh, puts it in uh, quite a precarious situation sometimes. Butcher now withdrawing away from the front line. There's a very heavily damaged chicken there for Supreme. He started to get another one half-built as well. There's a lot of half-built projects going on on this map. Stuff getting interrupted, build capacity going pop. And 
uh, we've also got a little bit of a counter barrage. Butcher's obviously rather upset about this whole Scathis business. He's moved a whole load of demolishers forward. Um, and certainly Team 2 shouldn't have any problem killing that as the GC decides to make uh, them a target. They're promptly going to die. Still, uh, T3 Factory has taken a lot of damage, but not anymore as they uh, get incinerated. Hoff is telling Sun to go through the pass with these groups of units. He's got uh, a whole bunch of Titans here. Kind of a mix, in fact. Lots of pings going off down here. Another chicken under construction, so it's very much all about the experimentals now. Still, that Scathis is operational, but we've got the Janus now on the move. See where these guys are going. Their current waypoint is just set to these hills. And a big group of broadswords trying to deal with this GC. But he's so timid. He's so timid. It's unbelievable. He should probably come in with the Janus to help destroy the Scathis. Really would be no problem. Scathis survives. There's a whole bank of attack missile launchers up here. That could very easily deal with the Scathis, I think. I think he's lost an awful lot of that attack missile defense that he once had. There's one there. Actually, well, there's quite a few actually on that side. Looks like that could be his plan. He's actually launching right now. What the... Uh, okay. So instead of going after, he's actually launching at his teammate. He's obviously very unhappy with how Sund has been playing and has ejected him from the game. Well, that's and uh, insults him as well. Well, that's uh, that's handy. That's very handy. Well, that'll be good for um, for the mods to see. It's uh, <laughs> there for posterity for everyone to see. So uh, enjoy your ban. But uh, on with that, we've got an experimental bobber that's come out from... Who's that come out from? Is that Butcher? It looks like it's pretty orange, so... Yep, that's... No, it's yellow, sorry. It has come out from Supreme. Dreddy Kruger's under heavy bombardment from it. I don't think he's got any way that he can escape. He needs to get inside the shield, and it's a real shame because he's got all these experimentals out, which really could make a difference on this one. But he's not going to get to use them on the middle. They're promptly going to go pop. We need to deal with that bomber. It's still alive. Could be real headaches for him. I guess uh, Butcher felt he didn't need green anymore. wasn't being that much help. And uh, they've got this sewn up. That's what, how, he, how he sees it. But GC's bearing down and Butcher might be just about to get a huge dose of karma I've got it running at minus one I'm gonna knock it back up to normal We're about to see why you can never run from a GC I think and Supreme is there with his commander as well oh my god kill Supreme kill him he's got the, the experimental bomber going around oh my god and Butcher is on 1700 hit points they're focusing down on Supreme. Gets a very nice bit of shield coverage. Will it be enough? He's got a chicken defending him. They are primarying him. They've switched to the chicken. That's a horrible decision. I hate that decision so much. Oh my god. That chicken goes down. Both those GCs are on nothing. One's on 1900. One's on 3000. But the experimental bomber finally finishes off Kriz. Oh my god, what an ending. But Psycho Killer has got two chickens now, and they are making their way through the middle. Both commanders are heavily beaten up. And they kind of have a clear route. What have we got going on? We've got another experimental bomber under construction up here. What happened to that other one? It looks like it might have died in that explosion.
Butcher is running for his life, running for cover. Both of them looking less than healthy. Scout planes going out, searching for Psycho Killer's comm. It's been spotted and heavily pinged. Question is, did that Awasar go up? I can't see it anywhere, but that one is being built awfully quickly. His chickens promptly made the way. He needs to break these up. One needs to chase down Butch. The other one needs to go after Supreme. Question is, what can he see? They're both heading south. That's a massive mistake, but he hasn't got radar coverage, so he doesn't know. He is literally going blind. He spotted an ACU. Oh, if he'd only just carried on going with that one, he could have chased down Supreme, and this would so be over. And the rate that that's building, that's frightening. There's a T2 transport come in from somewhere. And Psycho's on the move, trying to, I guess, disguise where his comm's going to be to keep him alive for longer. Butcher finally goes down. Not going to be sorry to see the back of that guy. And now they head north. Or well, they should be heading north. They shouldn't be hanging out here to destroy anything that's going to go pop anyway. And experimental bomber, that is going to finish. Leave how quickly he managed to do that. It's going to go hunting, I imagine, immediately. He could go around trying to kill that, but he's going to go around hunting. And he's going to take his commander out with the transport to safety. There is no way that Psycho Killer can chase it down there with the chickens. He's got no kind of air force. He hasn't had a single air unit all game, I don't think. He's immediately had his comm discovered. The first bomb away takes Psycho Killer down to 7,600 HP. Pop is asking for a rematch. And that is the end of the game. T2 commiserations. Got a bit of a leg up with uh, Butcher destroying his own teammate anyway, but yeah, commiserations indeed. Well played to all, though. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. There will be more to follow. I will probably be doing the under tw under 1200s uh, Worldwide People's Championship either today or tomorrow if one of the other casters doesn't get there first. Uh, that's the final of the under 1200s. Um, but for now, that is enough from me. So I hope you guys stay safe. Until next time, this is Guile signing out.